Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree Plus Nature Easter Decor. We're going to do two little projects. First thing I'm going to use is these wood slices. I got these at Hobby Lobby, but maybe you can slice up a tree bark. Um, and then we're going to use a drill bit. Hopefully you're not intimidated by a drill and a drill bit. Um, and then we're going to use these sticks off of these bunnies, but you could use any skewers uh, that you want. It's going to be for the legs. And now for the second project, we're going to use the DIY Dollar Tree Country Crate that we made last two years ago, as well as some twigs, the straightest twigs you can get. You want them in two different thicknesses. Um, then you're going to use these faux moss stones, as well as some, some of the uh, floral moss or reindeer moss, whatever kind of moss you like, um, as well as some burlap ribbon this one is happens to come from walmart just because i have so much of it but you know you can always use the dollar tree ribbon and as well as a sharpie don't forget sharpie you need some foam blocks to put in the country crate as well as some jute string which i didn't mention i also didn't mention um the little bits of however you want to decorate your little figures here made out of wood so both of these projects are directly inspired from pinterest there are a few different of these wood characters, but none, I couldn't find any bunnies. I only just found chickens and chicks, like little yellow chicks and chickens. Um, but I thought how cute it would be to make a bunny and a chick or chicken. I guess I made a chick. I don't know. I made it white. It's not yellow. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, I just knew that these were simple, um, going to be simple projects other than the fact that you have to use a drill bit. Um, there's probably ways to glue the sticks on these wood pieces are not very heavy I got this whole bag of wood pieces for around two dollars at Hobby Lobby I don't even think that did I have a coupon that day I may have gotten uh, had it with a coupon but they weren't very expensive to begin with is my point and I made sure I picked ones that had oval pieces because I knew I wanted to do this project so depending on what stick you end up using for the legs uh, will depend on what size drill bit you use, which is why I didn't mention it. These little sticks from the Dollar Tree, I ended up using my smallest drill bit, which I think is 1 8 inch, um, and they work perfectly. You want to hold the piece of wood disc flat on the table, but you have to actually go perpendicular to the cut of the wood. So if you notice there that, that angle, you have to kind of go in straight perpendicular to it and then once you start the drill bit then you go ahead and you go in um, parallel with the piece of wood so basically you start it on an angle and then you end up straightening it out um, and making it straight and then what I did was I took the two holes I didn't measure uh, like with a ruler but I took the two holes and I laid it onto the base and I just eyeballed that I lined them up um, because the legs have some give you don't have to worry about it not being like being absolutely perfect um, because they will be in different positions. Um, but then I went ahead and I cut the legs down to the height that I wanted. Um, glued them in to the base as well as into the, um, the, the actual pieces themselves. Again, I didn't mention glue in my instructions because gluing was not necessary. These actually hold pretty good. I wanted to give you glue options in case you ended up making your holes a little bit too big for your sticks. Then you want to go ahead and put some hot glue in there to help. Um, but otherwise, they'll stand on their own. All right. Now, for one, I wanted to paint one. I got this really nice chalk paint that it was just gifted to me. You guys will see that video coming up on my vlog channel. I mean, on this channel soon. Sorry. Um, so I just want to say um, thank you to uh, Marion for that wonderful gift of all of those craft items. So this is Waverly's chalk paint. Um, I could have used my chalk paint, but I had this out because I had just received it. Um, so I went ahead and I just did the circle. I left the bark the way it was because I kind of liked that look. But some of these projects that were on Pinterest, some of them had the bark completely removed um, and the whole piece was painted. But I just went ahead and I painted the front face of the one piece that's going to be the chick. The other one, I went ahead and I just took that white paintbrush that had almost no paint on it and I swirled it two times to make bunny cheeks. Then I took a tiny dot, like really like let the barely drip out of red to create pink. See, it's like barely a drop. And then I blended it in with whatever was white was left of the paintbrush. And I just wanted to give the bunny a little bit of a blush on his cheeks, which is not necessary, just the way I wanted to do it. 
Then I went ahead and I took whatever paint was left over from the paintbrush, squeezed it out, and then made a little bit of darker pink to make a nose. Again, totally optional. You can do a black nose. You can put a pom-pom on his nose, wherever you feel like. Okay? Now for the bunny, in case you don't have all of the things that I have for the chick, <laughs> I wanted to show you how you can go ahead and draw on a face and eyes we're not adding any extra to the bunny's face as opposed to the chick we have a 3d no a 3d beak as well as googly eyes um, but for the bunny we're going to create some ears now i'm going to show you how to create the ears and then you decide if you want them pointing up or flopping down i picked mine flopping down because that's the kind of bunny i like but you guys do what you want so i took about a three inch piece of burlap again how long you want it depends on you folded it in half and from the folded edge I created sort of a bunny ear all the way to the wire but I didn't cut through the wire then what I did was I took the scissor and I went straight along the wire okay so, bas so basically what I made was wrapped wires and what I did was then I continued gluing them along the edge of the top of the ear so that the whole ear looked like it was edged in wire. And that's 100% not necessary. It's just an extra step that I thought A, made it look a little bit more professional. And B, it also, if you wanted to bend your ear down, you wanted to have a little wire in the edge to manipulate it. Okay. So then what I've done is I've taken the uh, two bottom corners and I folded them in and then I folded the ear in half at the bottom stuck a little hot glue there and I basically created the ear to be folded so we're going to do that again so that you can see it a little bit better this time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ear that's flat and I'm going to take the two bottom edges the corners and glue them in and then I'm going to fold it in half and put a little hot glue there to basically make an ear shape and don't do what I do and let go because that thing opened right back up again. <laughs> but while I set that off to cool, I wanted to go ahead and draw the little bunny face on. So what I opted to do was to do a wiggly line for each of the um, whiskers. I just wanted it to be fun and playful. I added two ovals for the eyes, little dots where the whiskers met up, and then two little teeth, which is an option. You could ask, don't have to put teeth. Um, but I just thought that'd be really cute. So like I said before, I wanted my bunny's ears to flop down. And I showed you there for a second. You can see what they look like if they'd be standing. But I wanted mine flopping down because I want her to be really cute. And yeah, it's a her. I made it a her. Sorry. I should have given her eyelashes. Oh, I should give her eyelashes. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I just thought about this this very second. But what I've just done is I've decided where I want the ears to go. And then I basically just glued them right to the bark. Um, and now, I, like I said, I wanted it to be a her, and I wanted to create a little bow for her. So I've taken some of the pink burlap from the Dollar Tree, and I've just um, folded it in thirds, long, long wise, long lengthwise, so that it wouldn't be really, really a thick bow. And then I took that, and I just created one of our little bows. This is just a glue bow. So once I folded it in thirds, I went ahead and I wrapped it onto itself, glued it onto itself to make almost like a circle. Then I took another little piece, I rolled it so it would look like a middle, and then I created a bow, glued it around there, and just glued it on there. I think we guys, I think we've done bows a lot to for me to not have to walk you through every detail of a bow, but you know, I have tutorials down there if you're missing. So I had these beige colored pom poms um, from a thousand years ago from Walmart, and I wanted to give that tail because he's sort of a wood natural colored bunny but you don't have to do that you can give him a white tail you can give him a pink tail actually I think I might change it to a white tail because even beige bunnies brown you know brown bunnies sometimes have white tails okay so now I'm going to move on to the chick and for the chick what I've done is I've held a popsicle stick up to his face to get the right size of what size beak I wanted to have, drew it on with a marker, and then I cut it. The only tip that I'm going to give you about cutting it is you definitely always want to cut from the fat edge of a triangle to the skinny part of the triangle so that it, the uh, wood doesn't chip. And then I've just taken a Crayola orange marker. This is a washable marker even. And I've colored in that triangle and I just glued his beak right in the center of the oval. Now I'm going to give this guy googly eyes. So I was gifted these googly eyes as well. So thank you. And um, I tried. They're all different sizes and they're stickers. But the Dollar Tree does sell googly eyes. You just have to glue them on. Um, but I thought these were so cute. And I, like I said, I tested out which ones I liked the best. 
But now I wanted to give this chick a little um, personality. Here's where the personality is going to come on for this chick. I've took some of this felt. Now this felt was a or is a bunny chair cover from the Dollar Tree. Um, and I've just taken it and I've basically made arms lengths. <laughs> wings wing tips I don't know and I folded it on itself I glued uh, along the whole way and I folded it on itself and then I made two of those and cut them into wings um, um, then I what I did was I put the wings in the front where I wanted them to meet and uh, the good thing is is because I left the bark on the tree it kind of like velcroed a little bit so it held it in place while I glued it on the back and you can glue something in her hands. I was contemplating maybe giving her a small bouquet of flowers. Um, but I ended up just opting just to leave her wings open. And what I did then is I took another tiny piece of felt. And I cut notches in the top so it looked like a zigzag up and down. I rolled it so it looked like a feather puffed of hair at the top. And then I tied a little buffalo, no, a gingham, black and white gingham check bow on her hair. I just ended up cutting a piece of, of the dollar 97 gingham that I got from the from Walmart I feel like this was the best four dollars I ever spent because I have been using this fabric for everything and I still have a ton of it left um, but anyway I just cut it into a strip they do have lots of different bows uh, ribbons that you could use the Dollar Tree has colored ribbons if you want to get colors in there then definitely you could do that um, but then what I just did was I actually just tied the bow around the tuft of hair um, before I glued it on the, the chick. I thought it would be much easier to handle it while it wasn't glued on there, and I didn't risk ripping it off um, before. So I just created a little bow, got it the way I wanted. I used glue and tying, nothing special. Uh, we have lots of bow tutorials on our channel, guys. I'm not kidding. So this one is just... Flats with it so you like it, right? That's that kind of bow. And then I'm going to put a big glob of hot glue on the very end and glue it to the sort of the back of the little peak. But that will depend on how you lay your um, your how you put your chick, which side of the of the disc you put your chick. But there they are. I love it. She's so cute with that hair. I can't take it. Um, I hope you really like these two. They're super cute. I wanted to show you the back, how it looks, the bunny with a little butt, because it's a three-dimensional statue. And if you really wanted to paint the back of the chick and give her a little tail, that would be super cute as well. For the next project, again, this is Pinterest inspired. This one is so simple. And it is really a great project that you could do with kids for sure. The kids can help you pick the sticks. You guys can cut them down together. Actually, these sticks are dry and they snapped really easy. What I did was I just created the crosses that I liked and I wanted them to be proportional except smaller. So the two little ones are sort of have the same, I don't know, The, the I guess the way I th I'm thinking is that the the person who was creating the crosses for the uh, crucifixion and for the other prisoners then was going to make them all three the same I don't know why but one's bigger obviously because that's the one that's supposed to represent that Jesus was crucified on what I've done is I've taken a dot of hot glue but that's not necessary and I've just done that to hold the cross together while I wrap it with jute um and you're just going to wrap, we've done lots of things like this. We're going to wrap it in triangles, basically a few times diagonally this way, go around the back, a few times diagonally this way, go around the back and repeat. I've used a little dot of hot glue to hold the string down when I'm done, but you can tie it as you see with that one. I tied the second one just to show you how you can. And I've just made two little crosses and one big one. And again, my, the, my big keys to this, my tricks to this is to um, make sure that you make it longer than you want it to be because some of it has to stick into the box. And just when you're picking your sticks, try to get the straightest ones you can. Um, and that's really, that's it. So now I've taken, this is the crate that was um, after St. Patrick's Day. I basically took off the little candle jars and the candlesticks. I replaced the foam instead. I usually keep the foam in the other one. But because I wanted to do this project for my living room and I like this box in my living room, that's what I did. So I just spaced the crosses evenly. I kind of put the Jesus's cross a little bit forward and the other two back, filled in with all of the floral moss. It was about a half a bag I put in here. And then I added those floral moss covered stones. I like those. 
um, just to add dimension. The one in um, the Pinterest inspired one, well, one of them, one of them from Pinterest actually had it all stones, but I know that that'd end up being a little pricey. So just got the effect with the stones. I just have it on a jar there to tilt it so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I've taken some of that dollar, I mean, that, that burlap from Walmart that I got for $2 and I've measured the front of the um, box just so it fit across the front of the box and this is where we're just going to write he is rid risen now we've uh, done tutorials on our channel where you print out words and you can see through the burlap and you could trace onto burlap if you have a cricket and you want to iron on your burlap you can do that if you um any anything really you guys can do you don't even have to put this on burlap if you don't want to that was just the way the inspiration looked as i said um, but for this tutorial, he, the space between he is and risen is the center point, if that's something you want to learn to, you know, to space out your letters. Um, then what I did was um, I took the ends and I first pulled out the wires because this is wire edge burlap. And then I've just frayed the heck out of the ends. <laughs> I wanted it to look like it was a worn piece of material. So, of course, I pulled out the wires on the wire edge, and I went ahead and I just pulled on a 12 so rows of the fab of the burlap and just to make it frayed. I, again, I wanted it to give it that natural movement. And then I just laid it across the front. I didn't want to pull it tight. I also didn't want to glue this on permanently. You can if you want to. I did not want to do that. What I have is these two little angel lapel pins that I've probably had for way too long. And I just stuck in one in each corner, but one of the inspiration pieces had little clips and the other one had like push pins, okay? So that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry, I had to leave the birds. Um, if you do, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. I'm sure one day I'm going to get to them. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to share this video with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in making either one of these projects with their loved ones. And as always, take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!